Hey guys, welcome back to Algos Explain. My name is David Kim, and today we're going to go over a medium level question from LeetCode. This has to do with binary tree in order traversal. And so, if you get one of these questions uh, right off the bat, uh, you're going to, I'm going to hope you already know what in order, post order, and uh, pre order traversal is. And if you don't, just Google um, traversal order and Geeks for Geeks website. It's probably going to be one of the first ones to come up. Today, we're going to deal with in order traversal. And so, um, that you know geeks for geeks google it we're gonna go back to this question and just take a look at it what we want to do is we are given a tree uh, they geek or not geeks for geeks leak code um, I think they're really good with uh, these tree questions mainly because you're able to visualize it and uh, with this tree visualizer this is one of the features that I love about leak code that I haven't seen on code wars and so um, when I wanted to do graph questions I I needed a platform like this and so it was one of the main reasons or one of the big reasons why I switched over. Uh, anyways, to go over this question, in order traversal, what we want to do is we want to look at the, I believe the left node, the right node, or the left node, the root node, and then the right node. Okay, yep. So in this, we would look at the leftmost load node, which is the 4, then its uh, root, and then its right. And if, I mean, if at any point this had left ones, then we would do that. If this had a left one, we would do that before this one. But this is the tree we're looking at. It'd be 4, 2, 5, 1, 3. And the 5 is right in between the 2 and the 1. Um, it looks like it's right on the 1, of course, with this diagram. But usually, if you have a child node, uh, that placement should be right in between the parent and its parent. And so uh, the 2 and the 1, the 5 should be right in between that. If you're drawing it out on a piece of paper by yourself, uh, be sure it will help to draw these lines very horizontally or as slanted as you can. And uh, just keep that in mind. If I'm drawing a child, that child should be placed uh, like on the linearly right between its parent and that, that parent. Uh, so anyways, let's go back to this question. We're going to be given an input like this, and we're going to be given the root node as the input. And we want to just uh, output an array of the in-order traversal. And I feel like this is not really a medium level question. This is more uh, like right in between easy and medium. But I would I say if you didn't know in-order, post-order, and pre-order traversals during an interview, that would be that would make you sweat, <laughs> definitely. I mean, I'm pretty sure you could just ask the, the um, interviewer, but it's not going to look good. So know it. It's not too hard. It's not... Very hard to understand just three three ways of traversing through the uh, tree. And so this is a binary tree, which means that every parent will have only two children. And this is not a, since this is not a binary search tree, there's no guarantee of like number order, but we don't care about that anyways. And so just pointing it out. And uh, let's take a look at how this node, uh, this root is defined, or this tree. And so for this tree, we can... Um, or this, uh, yeah, the tree is created with the value, and we can do left or right. And so we can call this, so we can call root.left, root.right, and we'll either get a value or we'll get null. And if we want to see if the root itself is a value, then you could just do root.val. If you get a null at that point, then you know that you're given a dud, or you are at a dud, something like that. And so... It says follow up here, a recursive solution is trivial. Could you do it iteratively? Um, I'll leave that up to you. I believe I did a, a recursive solution. So we'll just go over that. But pretty much the, the strategy that we want to do is we, we are given the root, right? And because this is an in order, in order traversal, we want to pretty much get to the leftmost node as, or before we do anything, pretty much we need to get to the leftmost node. And that means going all the way to the left in this example, there is nothing here, so remember it's left, root, and then right. Um, but of course it's left, as long as there's no more left to do, and then the root. And then we go to the right, if there's a right, and then once we're at that right, we still go to the leftmost node. And so that's why we went left, there was nothing there, so we took care of the root, and we went right. However, uh, every time we hit a new root, uh, we want to go leftmost as we can, and take care of it as if this is its own new problem, which is why recursive is so easy in, in terms of this uh, this problem. So let's go ahead and, and so we know that we're going to have to have, uh, or we know that using a recursive solution is going to be very easy. 
um, we we want to take a look at trees and chunks left the root and then the right but then once we get to the right we want to do left root and right again and so we're going to use that little strategy over and over again that's why recursion is going to be uh, a no-brainer here and so of course I have a solution here already let's go ahead and take a look at this um, yeah if you aren't ready for it rewind pause it don't look at the solution but here we are and so we have a root node here and that's going to be the one and let me go ahead and open up this tree vis visualizer here. Uh, I think this is really great, um, especially when I was first uh, getting a grasp on a lot of these tree questions or graph questions. Uh, the the tree, actually not the graph, sorry, the tree questions, it helped me a lot. Um, and so root, we are given the root, which is going to be the one. So if we did root.val, we would get the one uh, at this point. We have an answer array. And so what we're going to do here is that is what we're going to be returning at the end. We are going to constantly be adding in our values here as we recurse through. And so uh, we just define the function in here. You could define it out there if you want. Um, or actually, can you? Yeah, yeah, um, I believe you can. Um, but for now, this is how it's written. In order, add. And so... Pretty much the, the naming behind this is we're going to add it for every in order traversal that we run into. Or we're going to add it in order as we run into it. And so we just defined our function here. This is pretty much the first call that's going to kickstart everything. And as you can see real quickly, we have more function calls in here, which will create that recursiveness. And so in order add root. Um, the root right now at this point we just started is the one and so and we have the answer here and that is going to be an empty array and so we're jumping into this function with the one node so the node uh, equals one there and the array is an empty array and I'm going to do this, it might take, it might make the video a little slower, but I think uh, we'll do one, one run through and it'll be, hopefully it'll be very clear. And so if the node at this point, um, and this line it says the node is one, if it is null, then return the array. The array would have been empty. So pretty much if we got a dud, uh, if they gave us like a null root uh, trolling us like that, definitely we're just going to give them back an empty array uh, because there is no traversal to be done. And so... That would have been easy. And so now, uh, in order to traverse, remember left, root, and then right, uh, doing it all over once we hit the right. And so let's go ahead and check out the node.left. There is no left. Of the one, there is no left. And so we're going to skip this if condition. And right here, we're going to array.push. And so array here has the one. Uh, remember, left, root, and then doing it all over at the right again. Uh, we just hit the left. Um, we just did the left, we're going to take care of the, the root, and then we're going to go to the right. We took care of the root by accounting for it, we pushed it into the array. And so now we're going to go to the right, and the right is going to be the 2. And we're going to call the function again right here. Um, so once we're here, and now this, with this uh, node.right is going to be node.right was the 2 and the array was the one. And so now what happens is we call here and the node here at this point is two and array is one. And so now we do the whole, this, this function all over again, again recursion, uh, given now the two. And so because we want to go to the leftmost, we let the, let the formula do it. I mean, uh, we check if the node was null. It wasn't, of course, it's a 2. And so we go to the left. And so node.left, what is that? Mm, that is a 3. And so node.left equals to 3. And so we gotta we think, OK, there is the left. But since we're not guaranteed that this is a balanced tree of any sort, um, perhaps that 3 has more. And so if that has more lefts, then we got to put it in. Even if it has more rights, we got to put it in too before we get back to the two over here. So let's go back and um, 
uh, and at this point the array is a one still and so we're going to call this function node.left um, and so right now we haven't finished with this node2 function call yet uh, but we got stuck right over here because we hit a left and we're not sure if there's more or not and so node at this point is going to be three and array is still a one and that is because we called it here we called it here in order order add of three and that's pretty much that's what we called and so we have to we have to get a return for this formula before we can continue down this portion of the two and so it's going to be super easy the three uh, the node is a three node is not null does it have a left um, and note that left at this point is talking about the children of three it doesn't have a left and so we skip this if and so it doesn't have a left let's take care of it so array now is it has a three in it and now it doesn't have a right it doesn't have a right and so um, it doesn't have the right and so we finish out of that but uh, at this point we don't return anything we just what we uh, essentially did was we mutated the array and uh, and I believe that's one of the reasons why if you try to take out this function out of this formula scope um, you're gonna have to compensate for it in a different way but at this point array has been changed to one and a three no no returns and pretty much what we're gonna be doing at this point is this this call finished this call finished and it changed every single array to have the one and the three now so let's go ahead and change those and uh, but some of these don't matter anymore we finished it in order three and so let's go ahead and get out of that um, note the left three we finished this call or let me leave that we finished that call right and the the result of finishing that call was that we added the three in there um, because of course we looked at the right two and there was no right and so we finished that call now we continue with this one and so now uh, array dot push the node node is a two and so now we push in the two there and now that changes things and then we look at the two two the node dot right node right now is two two dot right there's nothing there and so right now array is one three two at that point um, at that point we return it because we finished the call there was nothing more to do and uh, by the time we return this it's been mutated enough to have one three two in it and so let's go ahead and run the code one three two and now if this had different formulas or different um, children and so say if three had a children if three had a child then we could test that so that would be two having a child so let's put in null there and let's see four and five and so this case this tree is very ugly right now <laughs> really bad but what should happen is this one should be way out over here one two and then three and then four and five and so it should be one because it was the first root node that we hit it didn't have a left we took care of that one so it should be one and then we went to the right but we don't take care of that yet we go to the left we don't take care of that yet either we go as left as we can so it'd be one three or sorry one four and then we go up three and then we go to right five and then since that's uh, all done we go to two and then we go to the null at the very end so it should be one four three five two so let's run that code one four three five two great and so that that pretty much is how you do this um i would say the trickiest part of this other than knowing the in order post order pre order traversals would be doing it in a way that isn't too complicated. I mean, if you did the area of solution, I'm pretty sure it'd be a lot more messier than this just because um, pre traversals are often kind of catered towards recur recursive answers. But let's go ahead and submit this to uh, see. Yes, we did great. And we'll look at the details. And yeah, a lot of people we know, there's not too much uh, too much of a change here. Uh, a lot of people got this answer correctly. And so I would say, yeah, 
if you want to know the iterative solution and you don't want to figure it out yourself, most likely there's a, there's a discussion. See, this guy, he posted both in Python, Python, but I'm pretty sure you could figure it out. Just uh, it wouldn't be too hard to kind of, or look, JavaScript. And so, yeah, um, hopefully this video helped you out. If you liked it, leave a comment, like, and subscribe to my channel for more videos, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.